Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the rifle that you saw in the intro and you see in my hands right here. This is the Arsenal SLR-107R or SLR-107-11. You'll see it written both ways in different places. I'm not sure why, but it refers to the same rifle. So back in January, I went out to SHOT Show and I uh, did a video after that uh, for those that have been following the channel for a while. And I said uh, this was in my top three things I saw at a shot. Now, um, at the surface, it looks like a basic AK. That's a factual statement. It absolutely is a basic AK uh, made by Arsenal over in Bulgaria. The remarkable thing about it is the price point. So this one right here, I picked up over at Circle 10 AK for $849. So uh, $849 for an Arsenal AK. Uh, you haven't seen those prices here in the U.S. in many, many years. And uh, Arsenal, of course, is a, is a standard that many AKs are judged based on and uh, for good reason uh, they've been putting out very high quality rifles for a long time made in military factories so uh, as far as AKs go that tends to be a very important thing and uh, something a lot of folks look forward to so what we're going to do next is do an accuracy test with it we're going to step outside and I just want to warn you guys up front it was really windy out there when we were doing this test uh, but I wanted to get it done to get the video out to you guys I actually waited three weeks for a day of uh, low winds and uh, it never came so we just decided to do it anyway we'll let the dogs take a look at it first then get into that accuracy test coming up next accuracy what we're looking at is a target downrange at 100 yards the grids are one inch to give you guys an idea of size while I'm shooting this and uh, on the rifle right now we have a gen 1 primary arms ACSS 1 to 6 scope sitting in the uh, new at least relatively new Midwest Industries gen 2 side mount and I think we have vortex rings on there so that is the setup in the gun right now we have 123 grain Red Army standard for the load we're gonna to try to put five through if I can actually count correctly we'll see I messed that up earlier in the day and uh, that's pretty much it CTK precision rest for those wondering I do have a review so we'll see what we can do That was five. You guys know that. Next up, we have some Federal. This is the American Eagle brass cased, US made stuff. So, not your typical Comblack stuff, but it's actually not match grade ammo either. It's just their practice stuff. So, we'll put some rounds of that from the range, see how that does. I've actually never shot it in this rifle, so we're all about to find out together. Let's go check it out. I went to the wood line to try to get out of the uh, wind a little bit. Hopefully the audio is a little clearer here. But uh, first up, we have the Red Army Standard right here. And we're looking at just under three inches with that load. So probably like two and three quarters right on it. So here we have the uh, Federal opened up a good bit. I think a lot of people weren't going to expect that, myself included. But... It's just one group, but hey, uh, it is what it is. We report them here, we don't reshoot groups, so we're just under five inches with that one. So two and three quarters, just under five, probably four and three quarters, uh, center to center there. So um, 
seems on par with what I've been reading out there on the internet. A lot of folks are saying with certain loads they're getting right around two MOA. I believe that to be true. If I ran a bunch of different loads through it for a few groups each, I'm sure we could get one of those to tighten up a little bit, but uh, that's about what we can expect from it, I'd say. We're going to get into the details of the rifle, and we'll start at the end and work our way forward. I'm also going to just kind of go over this rifle first and then compare it um, to the FR, which I'm sure there's a lot of questions on out there on the internet. So first and foremost, the rifle comes with a Warsaw link stock. It's a fixed stock. It is Palmer, U.S. made. It has the... Uh, trap door there in the butt pad if you want to store your cleaning kit in there and we have our little sling swivel here on the left side of the stock the receiver is made over in bulgaria it is one millimeter thick made out of stamped sheet metal and is properly heat treated that sort of is one of the good things about getting a quote-unquote mill spec ak you don't really have to worry about the receiver at all everything there is lined up the rivets look good and uh, the actual safety on the firearm is pretty standard stuff for the ak nothing too fancy mine i did a little bit of fitting and uh, moves very smoothly and as you can see it has the modern style ribbed top cover where your safety is going to fit up underneath it to prevent it from going all the way up and rotating out of place. The grip here on the rifle is standard combox stuff. It is made of course in the US for 922R compliant but it is made to the AK pattern so it's very traditional in terms of being a relatively vertical grip angle which I do like and uh, it's a little bit on the small side which I generally do not like. However any of your aftermarket grips if you want to replace it will fit in there just fine. And just above that grip, we have our optics rail here. This is our side optics rail, which is what I was using uh, out there firing that group to mount the uh, RS Regulate mount on. Any of your standard com block mounts will work, whether they be you know from overseas, uh, RS Regulate like we used, or Midwest Industries, or any of the big names on there will all work just fine because it is uh, AK mil spec. Disassembly of the rifle is standard AK stuff, so we're just going to push our uh, spring in here remove our top cover you can see there like i mentioned earlier it is the new rib top cover and uh, we're going to push our recoil spring out and plug bolt carrier back and we can take our bolt out of the carrier itself so looking at the bolt itself this rifle here has right around 900 rounds through it we can see some pretty good finish wear actually coming off there but no metal gouging or anything like that which would be cause for concern just normal honest wear there on the bolt same thing here in the carrier nothing too crazy you guys can get a pretty good look at it and uh, you see I know one thing everybody wants to talk about is the tail I'll let my camera focus there and you can see it has a little bit of a mashing point there on there where the hammer is hitting it but not bad at all um, no excessive wobble or anything like that in the piston which I know some imported rifles do tend to have taking a look there on the inside of the rifle one thing I want to point out is the new trigger so Arsenal used to have this two-stage trigger which I was frequently complaining about here on the channel you guys would uh, hear that and uh, I think it was well deserved it was sort of unpredictable and had a tendency to break or cause a failure to reset issue so it was not the greatest trigger out there on the world in the world rather so this one here is much better again it's a US made trigger and it does have sort of almost like a two-stage design however it's based on the Vepper not the old Arsenal two-stage and we'll show you that here in just a second so it's got a little bit of play there and then you kind of hit a wall and it breaks so you can see there just like the Vepper triggers it has that little hump right in the front and really it's consistent overall um, we didn't have the best accuracy as you guys saw but that could have just been you know the ammo that we we're using in conjunction with this rifle but for an AK trigger it's not bad at all definitely an improvement over the old one in my opinion so uh, you can see there moving forward we do have a chrome wine barrel chrome chamber as per mil spec that barrel itself is uh, 16.25 inches cold hammer forged made over in Bulgaria and uh, chrome wine so nothing to complain about on that front continuing on forward we do have a standard AK leaf rear sight so it's graduated out to 800 meters if you want to use the ladder feature on there um, I tend not to do that personally but I know some folks really do like it so it gives you the option if you want to both the lower handguard as well as the gas tube cover are made in the U.S. again for 922R compliance. Uh, these are made by KVAR. I've never heard of any issues with them. They do work fine. They have a nice heat shield in there uh, to prevent overheating uh, during rapid fire strings. And uh, just in front there on the retainer for the lower handguard, we do have our front sling swivel. Uh, many of you will be happy to know that the uh, rifle does come with a cleaning rod. I know a lot of AK guys really like that. And we have our bayonet lug up front and the gas block is chrome lined. 
If you get out there on the forums, one thing you'll hear about Arsenal rifles is sometimes they don't zero. And uh, for the AK, you know, it's not a huge deal if your front sight is over to the right or to the left. Ours here is on the right, and the rifle is zeroed for a 50 meter uh, point of impact. So that is what it looks like. Everything appears to be straight. Of course, it's a little bit off, but for an AK, particularly a Comblock built one, that's perfectly acceptable and within the mil spec uh, criteria. Moving forward out there to the muzzle device, we do have a 14 millimeter threaded barrel and it just comes factory with the muzzle nut. Um, I think obviously doing that was one way that Arsenal wanted to cut costs. It also sort of just kind of um, gives into the reality that most US shooters are either going to add a flash header of their own or a compensator to their rifles. So FR stands for F folding, R for side rail. So that's what you're actually looking at here. And of course, that is the big difference here at the back end of the rifle is that the stock itself does fold up. Now a folding rear trunnion, uh, I'm sure it does cost a little bit more to machine and install. So it's one of the ways they're saving a little bit of money here on the uh, 107R. Additionally, we do have the reinforcement plate here on the FR that is not present here on the R. Most folks would say that that's not needed. In fact, most countries outside of Bulgaria do not actually include that at all. The old uh, two-stage arsenal trigger here is present on the one here on the bottom. And then we have the new one that we already discussed here on the top. And the other big difference is out here at the muzzle. So the FR series here on the bottom is gonna have a 24 millimeter threaded muzzle brake. And up here on the 107R, again, we're gonna go with the 14 millimeter and it comes with just the nut instead of uh, the FR, which actually comes with the uh, AK-74 style brake. I actually added the Krebs on there uh, to my personal one, but that is the difference up front. With any AK, I know folks want to know about reliability. So we've had zero malfunctions of any kind with this rifle. Like I said, we're not quite at a thousand rounds yet, so it's not super high, but it's enough to get a good baseline and you can't do any better than no malfunctions. Uh, so the majority of the ammo that we put through it was a Red Army Standard, I think 123 grain, full metal jacket stuff, and then a little bit of that American Eagle. We ran a couple mags of that through the rifle after that accuracy test and had zero issues with it. So good to go there with both of those loads at least. And you know, most stuff out there besides Tool or Tula should run fine in your AK. And that's one of the beauties of it. You can just run steel case through it and not have to worry about it. So the accuracy out there, um, of course, the conditions out there were not exactly uh, optimal, but you know, under a three inch group. And like I said, you know, if we ran some golden tiger, some wolf or something like that through it, I bet we'd get some two inch groups out of it for sure. Um, nice lightweight rifle overall, at least as it comes from the factory, it comes in right at uh, six pounds and 13 ounces on my scale. And uh, magazine that it comes with is a five rounder, but um, like most of your mil spec combock type AKs, it'll take any of the uh, mags that you might have in your arsenal kicking around. So I used a Yugo, Romanian, Russian, uh, the Circle 10 waffle mags that you guys saw. And we used Magpul mags as well. The waffle mags, if you guys are wondering where I got the uh, red, white, and blue ones, those are from uh, Circle 10 AK. I do not recommend uh, Googling blue waffle at work. It's not safe for work, but it's kind of an inside joke in the AK community. So moving on from that. Uh, finish. I know folks always want to know about the finish. Um, the Bulgarian uh, stamp rifles come with a parkerized finish and then paint over it. I know in the past there's been some issues and I, I actually have one that has some issues with the finish. It's a 107 FR, not the one you guys saw, a different one. Yes, I have two. <laughs> and uh, that one had some sort of bubbling and flaking. Uh, this one has not had any yet at all. The finish actually is holding up very well for a stamped Bulgarian rifle. Um, if you ever do have any finish issues though, you can sand it and just hit it with some enamel paint, some flat black. It should match this actually really close. So uh, that's the finish issue, at least on this rifle. But I do think overall, it's an excellent rifle. I think they're going to sell as many of these rifles as they can bring in for a long time, as long as they keep that price point where it is. Um, you know, unfortunately, the days of $300 Comblock AKs are gone for a number of reasons. Of course, the dollar value has changed, and uh, we've had many import restrictions on what we can bring in. So these days, there's just not a lot of Comblock um, options out there. Basically, you have Bulgaria, Romania, Yugoslavia, and then the Beper line. So that's pretty much it outside of the U.S. made stuff. So if you want that Comblock AK, you're sort of limited, and they're just not bringing them in in big numbers, unfortunately. So. At 849, I think you get a lot of money for your rifle, a rifle for your money rather. And uh, yeah, I would definitely pick it up again if you're looking for a uh, you know 30 caliber AK that is not 
expensive because eight hundred forty nine dollars is not cheap but for what you get for it i think it's pretty good um i would definitely take a look at this one again we'll put a link down below in the video description if you guys want to pick one up but that's about it uh, thanks for watching guys if you have any questions you can always post those down in the comment section you can also post them over at my facebook page as always which is generally the best way to get in touch with me um and uh that should pretty much do it like i said thanks for watching thanks for subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet please go ahead and do Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.